I cannot believe 48 hours later, nobody is talking about this. Two days ago, mainstream science broke a story that confirms an allegation that heretofore had been relegated to conspiracy theory. Now, the reason I have this image up is I think it's relevant to set the contrast. The story was that they want to stop the melting in Antarctica by using 7,400 gigatons, that's billion tons, of, you ready for this? Artificial snow. Now, how long had we seen the videos of people saying, the snow falling on my house is weird. It's not melting into water. And then science comes out with their ridiculous allegation of sublimation. People literally taking a ball of snow, putting a lighter to it, and watching it burn and char instead of melting into water. Which science literally is telling us that if Antarctica melts, the amount of water, water, that would go into the oceans would cause sea level rise. Wait a minute, why wouldn't it just sublimate? You see, they just admitted this. Now, the reason I have this image up, you see, the ancients knew that there were different things in nature they couldn't control. Sometimes things were warmer, sometimes things were, were colder. So they built their, their cities and they built their um, places to live strategically. See how this has multiple walls? So if there were a wave, yes, there would be destruction, but it wouldn't destroy everything all at once. This story is all over the MSM. Artificial snow could stop Western Antarctica from melting at the ocean. Scientists propose dumping 7,400 gigatons of artificial snow. Man-made Antarctic snowstorm could save coastal cities. Man-made snow. Artificial blizzards. It's all over the mainstream media. They just admitted it. And this was the dumbest thing I have ever seen in my life. People taking a snowball. A snowball, which is supposed to be just a ball of frozen water. And putting a lighter to it. And instead of it melting and dripping away, it almost caught fire. And they said, well, no, no, there's nothing artificial. There's totally normal. It's supposed to be like that. It's just called sublimation. And it just, it just happens when you put fire to snow. It just scars and scorches and it doesn't turn into water. But wait a minute. What about Antarctica? <laughs> I thought when we applied heat to the snow in Antarctica, why wouldn't it just sublimate? Why, why how would it end up in the oceans? If snow doesn't melt into water, we should have nothing to worry about, should we? Oops. They just blew it. They just revealed it. And they're, they, they're proposing now to take 7,400 gigatons of this fake make-believe, supposedly it's just what crystallized water, and they're going to dump it down there. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and nobody has picked this up. Of all of the thousands and thousands of channels out there and the truthers and everything else, and all you have to do is type Antarctica into Google, and this story comes up, where they just confirm this. They have just confirmed. Now, the reason I brought this up, because I'm a big fan of Deep Space Nine, but once again, this goes to what they call two-dimensional thinking. If this were in space, you would think that the concentric rings wouldn't be on two dimensions, that they would be on three. Limited, of course, to, you know, the ability to construct such things. But I wanted to bring up a couple of things in Antarctica today, just to show you some new stuff. That kind of confirms this. But I'll say this again. If snow melts into water when heat is applied, then how do you explain 
the videos of people putting a flame to snowballs and having them burn. If we apply heat, and the only thing that happens to snow when you apply heat to it is that it sublimates and doesn't turn into water, why is the melting glaciers, why is that a problem? They're either lying about this or they're lying about that. Both can't be true. So, without any further delay, though, um, I did find some new stuff down there. It's uh, it's not much, but it's just more confirmation about what we have known for a long time, is that there was a civilization here, something happened, and there are remnants of that. Now, upper left, of course, is the uh, artist's rendering of what... Sorry about that. Antarctica would have looked like had there not been these massive ice sheets. And it's very odd because it's almost identical to Australia. If you flip it around, let's see if we can flip it around. And zoom this back in. It, and then if you take this, this image and you flip it and you invert it, it's virtually identical to Australia. But anyway, where we're going to be looking at is over in the... Uh, let me flip this one more time. Oops. Sorry about this. Oh, for Pete's sake. Hold on, I'm getting dizzy. All right. Here we go. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this map. Let's just get rid of this one. <laughs> and let's just go over here. And we'll maximize out this one. Okay. Where we're going to be looking at is kind of over here in the 3 to 4 o'clock region. The part up by South America is, of course, the... Uh, 12 o'clock, and so it's going to be kind of down here. What I found right off the bat was this huge field of, and we're going to be quite a ways away from the sea, of turquoise. Now, when you look at this, this can't be sea algae. This can't be, it's green. It's this massive area that is green. I mean, there's areas around it that have water, but this is a monster, monster area. I found little tiny areas that were a couple hundred yards. This is miles wide. That as this ice melts into water, it doesn't burn. It's revealing these huge areas, these huge expanses of greenery. And then not very far away, I found this very odd area that is in the shape of a perfect shield. It's, it's kind of raised up and looks very, very much like something that was uh, put there specifically for a reason. Who knows what? But it's just an odd shape. We see so much of this down here, 90 degree angles and different structures that just seem like they were created. Now, this one is very, very difficult to see, to get to show up. Let me see if I can do something different with the camera here. Okay, basically the idea is this. I'm going to try to move this around and zoom it in. There we go. There are these four parallel lines. One up here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, what makes these unique is that not just the fact that they're perfectly parallel to each other, but the distance between them. The distance between the first one and the second one is exactly one half of a nautical mile. The distance between number two and number three is a quarter of a nautical mile. And once again, between three and four is a half a nautical mile. We've seen this measuring these, what I've labeled cable and tunnel structures. One of the things they all have in common is that they all run on the cardinal directions of the compass, either 0 to 180 or 90 to 270, without exception. And the distances between them, the parallel ones, all come out to some um, multiple of a nautical mile. And we know, of course, this is an ancient um, unit of measure. We don't use it in modern um, 
either satellite imagery or naval operations. It's just not something we use. And over in this area, I have labeled low-res pyramid. There is so many things. I should say there are so many things. It doesn't uncover in high-res, but clearly you can see right here what is the remnants of a pyramid. And you can see no less than, I mean, the angles and the structures around here just defy logic that this would happen naturally. It's very clear that what we're looking at is the remnants that ice and time and wind and snow has damaged it for sure. But as we look farther up north here, you know, they might have had this issue themselves with the rising um, seas many, many, many years ago. Just natural things that happen on our globe. Seas go up, seas go down, it gets warmer, it gets colder. You know, and the reasons, I don't think they wasted time like we are pointing fingers as to saying, well, this is the reason why or that's the reason why. They just decided to adapt. And I've labeled this one seawall because it looks like they were trying to construct some kind of a seawall to protect something. Like where we started in the original imagery, that rendering of, of Atlantis where they built just ring after ring after ring after ring, basically of seawalls. And this last area, it's so stark to see the clear bays and harbors and structures that you would need to conduct shipping. Especially this one right here. It's full of snow now. But this nice, perfect concave shape kind of looks like a, a smaller version of Lake Michigan. And over here, one of the reasons that I brought it up is I want you to look very, very carefully at these two shadows. You're telling me these two shadows right here are of natural formations? Supposedly what's casting these are is this ridge here. Oop, sorry about that. Do you see anything on this ridge that would create this perfect triangular structure and then this whatever it is sticking up next to it? This just defies nature. Nature doesn't do this. It doesn't because look at the rest look at the rest of the ridges around here. See how they're just normal and jagged and everything is what you would expect. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we see a perfectly smooth triangular structure with that drops down to a 90 degree angle. And then some other smaller structure next to it. It's this kind of stuff that I think if there is an effort out there to wipe the imagery, they're missing the shadows. They're, they're doing a good job with the actual things, but they're forgetting that those things cast shadows. And that's how you can find them. So I'm going to leave this image up just so you guys can look at it. And of course, I will give you guys the locations so that you can find these for yourself. But there's no one that's going to convince me that what I'm looking at, the shadow there, is of something that was created by nature. Naturally. No way. Like, share, subscribe.